what's up guys welcome to the organic guy podcast i am your host the organic guy and of course as usual in this particular podcast every episode is as great as the other one and if not better than the previous one today i have a special special guest for you he is known as the father of organic in the country all right he's known as the father of organic in the country so as you ponder what really that means i want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors that's think organic kenya who proud themselves as being the home of organic products they are an e-commerce so that means you are able to get your products conveniently at the comfort of your coach all right so there have they do have a really really great variety of organic products i'm talking about fresh organic produce vegetables foods herbs you name it I'm talking about beauty products i'm talking about organic superfoods so there is a huge and a wide variety of organic products that you can be able to shop for as well as their prices are very very affordable so you want to check them out uh, i remember you can check them out at thinkorganic.co.ke their website is at thinkorganic.co.ke so that you can be able to indulge on your organic shopping so when you do your shopping you can use the coupon code the organic guy to get a 10 percent off be sure to use the coupon code the organic guy to get a 10 percent percent off on uh, your shopping so ladies and gentlemen yes in this particular episode we talk to the father of organic in the country he goes by the name of mr njoroge who is the executive director of the kenya institute of organic farming uh who are really one of the pioneers of the organic space in the country so he was one of the guys in the 1980s when the government was pushing for the green revolution who saw what the future really looked like uh with uh, empowering farmers with organic knowledge to be able to practice organic farming so he shares with us the difficult times during the early years even the government spying on them on what they were doing and the um, chemical companies you know singling them out as one of the detectors of their market so a really really interesting story there so he shares with us how uh, the kenya institute of organic farming really came out and also how the kenya organic agriculture network corn as you know it today uh, came out so it's a really history and gives you a better perspective of how the organic movement has come so far and really how the organic movement will have to move forward or needs to move forward for it to experience its full potential so ladies and gentlemen stick till the end great conversation i'm sure you'll be able to have a great insights uh, in these conversations so i hope to see you on the other end of the conversation so enjoy uh introduce to majina yako um for guys who haven't and about you. Okay. Mm. Uh, my name is John Wanjang Gerovi. Uh, I am uh, the director of the Institute of Organic Plan. Mm. Uh, we have been uh, training and promoting organic agriculture for the last uh, 30 or so years. Mm. I came across it myself after uh, spending one year in, uh, in England mm. where I learned about uh, uh, natural farming uh, in a college called Emerson College. Emerson College. Emerson College. Mm. Uh, during that time we uh, arrived in time for uh, large preparation and, and uh, planting. Mm early uh, March and then uh, we went through the whole process of growing using organic methods mm. until uh, September when we harvested the crop mm. and then uh, after that 
uh, we went on a tour. I was uh, involved in a, a tour through the Netherlands, yeah. Germany, uh, Belgium, and then back to England mm -hmm. uh, for me to board uh, my plane and come back to Kenya. Okay. That was in 1984. 1984. When I came back, um, I was eager to introduce to Kenyans yeah. uh, what, I was, what I had learned for the one year. Mm. I used to work with an organization called Inner Test Formation. Mm. It was a Catholic uh, Jesuit priest uh, project which uh, were helping people to study agriculture at home on a correspondence basis. Mm. So some of the groups we were training and uh, and uh, um, in a transformation, mm. I thought this was a good group to get them started on organic farming. Okay. And uh, I had uh, the good uh, uh, luck of uh, a project that was in Nakuru, mm. where they were offering um, calves, you know, havers, mm. to farmers who had lost their animals after the 1984 drought, which was a big drought, which affected the the It had come to be, um, you know, um, a concern for the whole for the whole world. Mm. So, in the diocese, Catholic diocese of Nakuru, uh, they wanted me. What's the sound? They wanted me to introduce organic uh, agriculture so that those who had received havers mm -hmm. can be able to use the manure to grow crops and therefore become sustainable and also find uh, regular use for the animals output. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, together with the, the Catholic team in Nakuru, we organized a workshop uh, which was very successful mm. in 1986. Mm. It took three weeks to go through the workshop. We invited about 45 participants mm. from different NGOs, from different organizations, yeah. and church. And uh, at the end of the three week course, mm. uh, three uh, important uh, you know, conclusions were made uh, yeah. recommendation. One was that uh, what we had set on the ground as a learning demonstration mm. be maintained and that um, uh, the students of Baraka, where the workshop was taking place, yeah. Baraka College in Moro, mm. should uh, have a, a program on sustainable agriculture to continue with this learning. Mm. And the third um, recommendation was that an organization, a Kenyan organization, mm -hmm. should be formed to carry on with this uh, prog uh, program mm -hmm. and uh, promote it. Yeah. So after the workshop, I decided uh, that I better take up this uh, challenge mm -hmm. of. Uh, Organizing our, uh, you know, an organization, an indigenous organization that could take off. Mm. And uh, I looked for a name. Uh, at that time, we had register with the registrar of companies, mm. and I, uh, the name Kenya Institute of Organic Farming was accepted. Yeah. And uh, in uh, April. Uh, 1980, you know, in August 1986, at the end of in, uh, of uh, of the workshop, mm. this uh, name was registered okay. as a company without shares, yeah. uh, working on non-profit making basis. Mm. So from there, I went back to my organization in Adels to say that I would like to be released so that I can promote organic agriculture mm. uh, with this. The first team that we uh, involved were the participants of that workshop. Yeah. And we met with them several times. 
but the cost of bringing them together and discussing when they were really working with other organizations proved very difficult. Mm -hmm. So we did not go very far. Uh, I followed up on uh, the uh, introduction of organic agriculture uh, in the form of sustainable agriculture mm -hmm. at Baraka, and that actually has gone on in the now today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as Kenya Institute of Organic Farming was uh, concerned, uh, we, 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 we had three uh, trustees mm. whom we registered as the ones in charge of the, of the organization. Yeah. And from there, we decided to uh, be going out uh, to practice uh, organic agriculture on one of the trustees' uh, gardens. Mm. I was uh, the one who, who was uh, more equipped with knowledge yeah. on the organic agriculture, so I would uh, the one to do that. Mm. And we did that for about six months. After that, uh, the, the teachers in England mm. who are from Amazon College, they requested for what you call a, a time off mm. to come and help found, uh, continue found uh, ground the organic agriculture. Mm. So they came to me, they were my host. We were with them for, we were supposed to come for a year, but we actually stood with them for the next three years. Okay. During that time, uh, we uh, were supported by the corporate houses, uh, both in Nairobi and mm. Nakuru. Yeah. And uh, we would go to every church on Sundays, ask if it is uh, possible to talk to the congregation. Mm. Uh, after the church ended, then we would ask them whether they would like to hear about organic farming. Mm. And uh, most people were positive about it. Yeah. So then, the, those who, uh, were, who accepted to uh, organize for a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you meet. Yeah. So that uh, helped us to start small groups mm -hmm. based on the, on the church, on the attendance of the church. And when we meet, we met with them mm -hmm. together now with the, with the two lecturers from England. Mm -hmm. One was a Canadian, the other one was a German, uh, an Dutch. Yeah. yeah. And then myself, we would uh, practically we compost mm. with the group, uh, practically do some uh, techniques of digging, uh, practically do some pest control issues. Yeah. And that excited them quite a lot. And uh, we would be invited by the next, uh, mm. uh, and the next, and the next, you know, and the next. Uh, our fads ran, ran out, mm. uh, and then one day we were um, we were visited by a group of sisters mm. from New York. Yeah, they said we have heard about what you are doing, and we would be happy to see uh, your groups on the ground. So we took them to one of the churches where we have a very active group. Mm. Uh, they were very excited, you know, and the group was very happy. Yeah. When we were taking them back to the hotel, they said, if you would like some seed money, we would be happy to, to come to support you. Yeah. Uh, that group of sisters from New York uh, assisted us for the next uh, for, Three years, mm. uh, they bought us a vehicle to be able to move from one group to another, okay. and they also give us funds to be able to employ extension workers on the ground. Yeah, uh, we ended up with close to sixty uh, different employees on the ground mm. uh, because wherever we had a group. Then we would ask one of them, uh, you know, to come up for a job 
to become the extension worker for that area. Yeah. And we would then pay on a regular basis, you know, uh, for the for for the person to extend the information to other groups. Mm -hmm. And depending on the uh, industry aspects of the person, yeah. we would also create a lot of other groups. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month, when they were coming for their salaries, we organized that they come uh, three days before, so that we update on their information, mm -hmm. pay them something more, and then they would use this new knowledge now to yeah. again continue. Mm -hmm. And the program was very successful. Mm -hmm. So it, it created uh, a lot of areas for, for training. Mm -hmm. And we started having quite a lot of uh, groups actually coming and saying, please come and train us, yeah. please come and train us. The Minister of Agriculture, that was when we, we had this district focus for development, you know, this mm -hmm. district focus for development. I started seeing that, that uh, you see, we, we were bringing knowledge which the Minister of Agriculture was not Promoting, hmm. because what, what was happening is the, the agricultural staff would come in as learners, hmm. and they would not introduce themselves yeah. because they always said the government does not allow us to to promote organic farming. So, so in that case, we don't want to be seen as if we were part of this. Okay, so the government at that time wasn't supporting um, organic organic agriculture. No. Oh. So In you... fact, uh, at one time it it was thought that this is a, a church activity. Okay. You know, because yeah. uh, often we used to go through the church. Hmm. Uh, so in that case, then it, what happened was uh, that in some districts, hmm. they they said you are coming to tell people about. Uh, going back to composting and uh, working with manures instead of uh, mm. chemicals mm -hmm. yeah. don't come to this district. Okay. I think so, at least the two, in two districts we were barred from taking this knowledge there. Wow. So that is uh, that's what happened. Mm. The, also the, the, the agrochemical companies yeah, yeah. also heard about us. Hmm. And they started saying that uh, we are spoiling their, you know, activities on the, the market. Ground, yeah. In their market. Yeah. And I remember one time we were invited. I was invited at ABC to the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation uh, hmm. uh, to give, uh, you know, information. Hmm. And when I arrived there, they were side side by side with me. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a European person who, who was from the Agrochemical. Yeah. And when we were given the opportunity to talk, we started by attacking me. Two people are the ones who are uh, spoiling the, uh, the agriculture in this country. Mm. They're telling people not to use uh, chemicals and fertilizers which are there, and you're telling them to go back to their Mm. to their manures and so forth. Yeah. So, um, but uh, after that, then we, the government actually responded by by having a program mm. on the safe use of agrochemicals, which was oh, okay. uh, uh, rolled out by the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. How to mm. wear gloves and uh, <coughs> masking, uh, you know, you know, uh, yeah, protecting, protective clothing mm. and. Uh, Gum, yeah. and gum boots and gloves and, you know, yes. and so forth. So um, that program went on mainly because of uh, what, what you the farmers doing. had uh, learned from us that yeah. uh, chemicals are really dangerous. Mm. Uh, so from there, uh, then um, uh, the I I. Uh, the International Monetary Fund, yeah. IMF, IMF yeah. came up mm. in the, I think that was in early 90s. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, early 90s. And they started saying that uh, the 
uh, that world countries should really take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Instead of go giving free education, free hospital, free work, mm -hmm. they should actually ask the, the recipients to pay in a certain way. Yeah. And in Kenya, we remember uh, it introduced fees mm -hmm. into the universities. Yes. At that time, you were started by only 6,000. Wow. Uh, the university for university education uh, and uh, the hospitals also you had to pay something uh, and uh, quite a few other things you had to, to, to pay yeah and uh, that created a lot of uh, you know reaction by the university students and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. and the international funding uh, community responded by saying we are cutting off all the aid mm -hmm. even to international NGOs and other NGOs who try to cut off yeah. all the aid. Yeah. So I had to ask the runners, you know the the farmers who yeah. are running, what are we going to do? Because now we have about 60 uh, extension workers we are paying. Yeah. What are we going to do? And uh, they came up, they came up, they said, let every group said a student, mm. one of their young people who have left school, mm. come and learn, and then because he's one of us, he will yeah. be teaching us. Yeah. And that is how we started the school. Wow. In this year, the initial group of uh, 13 students yeah. came from the groups we have trained, yeah. sent by the group themselves, so that when the more international monetary fund stops the donation, mm. They would have the own people to train, uh, to, to, to follow them and train them. Yeah. So after the first uh, group of train of trainees mm -hmm. at Kiev now, mm -hmm. so we had to set up now a, a, you know, a train, a, a, train, a center for training them. Yeah. Uh, that was in Lower Kapete in Nairobi, in, in, uh, in Kiambu, Lower Kapete. Mm -hmm. Uh, after say, having the first group uh, come in in uh, April of 95, mm. the September we asked for more people from the farmers. We had another class, mm. and from there we set up uh, a regular intake mm. every March yeah. and every September every March and every September, yeah. and that these people would then go back to the communities mm -hmm. and educate them. Yeah. Uh, so that get mm -hmm. uh, when our funding now with the uh, uh, sisters of New York ended, mm -hmm. the students uh, were able to uh, continue, we were able to continue with the fees mm -hmm. coming from the students. Yeah. And then later on we were able to write uh, uh, more proposals and a few mm -hmm. other donors, external donors, who are able to say, step in mm. and also help us in a donor, donor fund. Yeah. So this process has gone on and it moved from one location to another location, yeah. from one district to another district. Mm. We were able to reach as far as uh, Kisi, I remember we went to Rongo, Wow. with the Seventh Day Adventist mm. orders there. Mm. We were able to go to Kakamega with the public houses in uh, Mukumu. Mm. We were able to go to Kitare, uh, Eldoret, we went to uh, Balingo. Mm. Oh, we, we went to Meru, uh, we went to, and all over the districts of uh, Mount Kenya region. Yeah. We had groups there. Wow. In Machakos and Tiki, uh -huh. very strong groups. And uh, all these people now started saying you know, when they saw there was an, 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 you know, an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. knowledge, they, they also set in, they sent in their people. Uh -huh. uh, we made the, the training to be uh, one full year, one and a half years. Yeah. One year of learning and half year of practical practicals at the group at the group at the center. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the process went very well. Okay. Then um, um, as we continued, of course, 
uh, funding became very slow and so mm. forth. Mm. The university, particularly J. Court, yeah. became interested in uh, this land. Yeah. And uh, uh, when we moved to Juja now, mm. They actually sent someone, the, the, the faculty of agriculture dean, okay. to come and inquire if they could be involved, involved in the teaching of organic farming. Mm -hmm. If we could have a, a curriculum that we would work together. Yeah. And in the year 2002, almost the whole year, we formulated a curriculum. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the university, the J. Court University. Uh, and um, uh, this, this was, uh, was uh, completed, uh, the syllabus was completed, mm. and uh, the uh, university, uh, what do you call the, the, the committee of the university? Mm. The council. The university council of J. Court okay. approved it. Yeah. And uh, at that time, the, the fee was Mr. Mm. Uh At the end of 2002, yes. a new president was, set, was, was elected. Yeah. And one of the things that the new president did was to uh, promote Michieka. Mm. And he moved him to a different uh, responsibility. Yeah. And a new office was put in J. Yes. And at that time, we had not got our go ahead mm. to start the curriculum that we had yeah. worked on. So the new office he was put in mm. was uh, rejected by the teachers. The, by the staff the lecture, yeah. and lecturers and students mm. of J. Uh, Quad, and it caused a lot of chaos, you know, mm. and so forth. That delayed the the mm. the, board, the you know the curriculum, the, the, the curriculum you know, mm. the launching. Mm. And in the year two thousand and four, yeah, we decided to go it by ourselves. Wow. So we were able to launch a diploma course mm. using the curriculum that we had already developed, developed together. Mm. And uh, so at Kiev we set up our, our own uh, certificate course mm. and uh, diploma course. Yeah. So those two are still running even today. Okay. And uh, the, the training, uh, the, meaning the training of farmers also has moved on. Mm. Uh, we moved now to the coast boy we have done a lot mm -hmm. and then one one two two most important uh, NGOs actually took us mm -hmm. very strongly one was the foster parents plan international mm -hmm. their program in Meru and Embu we were asked to facilitate, to facilitate uh, the food security program mm -hmm. And therefore, we went and introduced organic farming there yeah. with our own staff who we were paying to continue uh, that. Yeah. And um, this, that, uh, that now, uh, the other organization was uh, was uh, World Vision International. Mm. It came on board and it accepted that uh, Kyo will, yeah. will lend that. Um, uh, the services of food security program. Yeah. You know, and these ones took us all over the place because this uh, World Vision International was doing a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. uh, they took us to Voy, they took us to uh, Yeah. they took us to Makwen, uh, took us to even to Rukana. Mm -hmm. We did prog uh, you know, uh, food security programs for them. You know, many places, yeah. and we worked with them for a long time. So uh, that helped us to continue uh, for uh, in our in our activities. Yeah. You know, all the other Yeah. So um, uh, the, the 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 one of the donors helped us, helped us mm. to purchase this 
property at Yuja yeah. and to meet the construction for classrooms and uh, accommodation rooms and stuff like that. Okay. And we were able to, to you know, to, uh, set up the to set up now the, the college in, yeah. in, 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 in Yuja. Mm. And since that time, we we have um, we have uh, continued. We requested about marketing, mm. and uh, one organization from Holland accepted to fund an outdoor farmers market in Nairobi. Okay. We even went and identified the, where the location of the market would be. Yeah. But as a last, as a last, um, uh, an afterthought, yeah. they they said, why can't we call all the people now who have heard about the planet mm. and get a, a three-day or four-day meeting yeah. in Nairobi mm. and uh, uh, you know set the structure. So, so we had that. Um, advertisement in the name in the, in the, in the, in the nation yeah. and we met at Isipo for four days yeah. under the auspices of uh, um, Isipo itself, yeah. the International Center for the, you know, the Physical for Insect Security and Culture. And the, the conclusion of that workshop yeah. It was not uh, mainly to set up a market, but to set up a coordinating body mm. for organic farming in Kenya. Yeah. The name that was identified was Kenya Organic Agriculture Network. Yeah. It was immediately put in place, it was housed by Isipe. Wow. And, uh, uh, was given four, uh, five main things. Mm. One is to lobby uh, organic farming to the to the Kenyan government. Yes. Two to uh, um, accelerate the marketing process. Mm. Uh, three to ident to set up standards. Yeah. Adapted from the international uh, mm. Five. To coordinate the training, the training of the organic agriculture. Yeah. Um, those four issues mm. were set up with each officer at Kwan, at Kwan being responsible for that. For that yeah. In all four, mm. the people to go and lead those came from here. They were our staff in the Wow. For all four of them. Mm. And um, some of them are still there, very busy. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the uh, Kwan has now is now the coordinating body of the yeah. organic agriculture in Kenya, mm. which is still housed at uh, at uh, Isipe. Although mm. I heard uh, it moved, it moved this year or yeah. or, earlier, or last year. Yeah, this year. This year, yeah. it moved to a new board, a new uh, place. And um, uh, initially, I was elected as a board member, mm. but uh, uh, you know, after some time, that was so uh, uh, busy. Yeah. So that is an, one one of the achievements I would say we have done. Mm. The second achievement was that. Um, so that was in which year? Uh, that was in two o six. Two o six. Two o six. Okay. Uh, the other achievement was um, in 2011, yeah. when uh, African Union, sitting in Mozambique, mm. uh, decided that um, uh, all African governments should uh, allocate, uh, was it 13 percent or no, 13 percent of their budget mm. into agriculture. And they should actually use organic farming. Uh, uh, although they do not call it organic farming per se, they just call it uh, ecological. ecological organic agriculture. Yeah. So uh, we had uh, we had a coordinated, you know, a formulating uh, workshop here in Zika. Mm. Uh, 
and then after that, uh, through uh, African Union, yeah. uh, funds were given by the Swiss government. Yeah. Was it Swiss or Sinda? By Sinda government. Yeah. To fund the project in five countries. Yeah. Tanzania, Kenya, uh, Nigeria, and which other one? Ethiopia, Senegal, uh, Ethiopia was not one, and uh, the Namibia. Yeah. Five countries pushed those for the whole, so each country from West Africa mm -hmm. and so forth. So, um, for for you know, so we had a first ecological organic agriculture in Dar es Salaam. Yeah. Um, later on, the project was started. Mm -hmm. um, then um, um, we had a second uh, workshop in uh, was it, uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, in Zimbabwe, yeah. no, in uh, Zambia, mm. in Zambia, actually the, the South African country. Yeah. Uh, not, not, yeah, not, uh, yeah. So uh, the second one was in Lusaka. Mm. The third one was in Nigeria. Yeah. In 2015. Now, instead of um, just you know, delegates bringing in uh, people. Yeah. The African Union decided to look into Africa who are the people who have promoted organic agriculture yes. most. So for Kenya, I was uh, selected as the champion for organic agriculture in Africa. Wow. And uh, last year, I had to present a paper in Senegal mm -hmm. uh, and Dakar. And, um, uh, I think we were about five of us yeah. from uh, different countries. So now in, in Africa? In Africa. Yeah. So uh, that is the only other achievement I think. Good. Yeah. Uh, that uh, I am Af I'm the Africa, I'm one of the Africa mm. champion for organic agriculture. Wow. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I have just we have just been moving from one state to the other, one state to the other yeah. and so forth. And um, yeah, that's what I need to see. There's so many things to talk about from uh, what you've just explained to us mm -hmm. from the entire process. But just to um, to touch on a few points. Mm -hmm. So from um, from the early eighties when you went to England. Mm -hmm. Um, so you went to England to study about organic? No, I went uh, because with Inlandes Formation, uh -huh. I went on uh, behalf of Inlandes Formation. Yeah. We were doing correspondence and teaching for farmers in Africa. Yes. And one of the emphasis was that uh, you should not tell the farmer to, to to go and ask information from the Rocco agricultural officer. Mm. Because the argument was supposing there is no agricultural officer nearby. Mm. Or to tell him to, to go and look for this chemical to be pure. Yeah. Tell supposing he doesn't have money. Ask give him a practical thing which is can, clear, can a clear up uh, what he can do when he has, has no other person to go for. Yeah. So we would Whenever there was a recommendation for a particular thing, we would go for a local. You know? mm. If uh, there was a recommendation for a fertilizer, mm. if there's no fertilizer, what do you do? We would have, we were yes, ready sir. to show that person how to make compost yeah. and how, what to do now without, mm. without fertilizer. That, yeah. So for that reason now, we were invited to run more. Oh, about okay. what we can write and we Help. discuss with the, with the farmer mm. in the lessons we are giving uh, on that, on that uh, you know, Catholic Jesus, I mean, just with the program. Okay. So, and okay. that is the one why we, wa we went on a practical thing mm. to go and do it organically so that we can show 
Oh. Uh, when you come back, you show the farmers how it will be done. Yes. And that is the reason why we went to yeah, so but when I reached here, mm. and I was involved in that workshop in Nakuru, mm. then I, 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 I actually resigned from uh, Inagos mm. uh, to, to, to found this feminist Yeah, mm. so the, um, the other argument is, um, before those years, so there's um, a period, uh, I don't know exactly which years, but there's a period the government now started to promote the use of external inputs, yes. the fertilizers. Um, and the pesticides. Yeah. So before that period came into acting, mm -hmm. the government actually started promoting it. Before the years, you know, the, the years before that, were when people doing organic agriculture already. You know, they were doing traditional. Yeah. People knew that if you, you know, like uh, many communities, mm. the first job for a, the first work for a uh, woman mm. is to sweep her compound. And then throw it at the at the oh, at the nearest the nearest uh, dust dust uh, dust hole. Yeah. You know, most people would dig, uh, you know, where to put their 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 their, their sweeping mm. at the gate of the of the homestead. Yeah. So the the people in that compound would sweep and put it in that hole. Mm. And eventually it would rot because most of it was uh, either manure from the animal mm. or, uh, or uh, you know, the leaves from the, 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 the leaves, foods that the food, the, the, you know. Uh. And uh, it, once it rots, every household, every woman, mm. when she's going now to her garden, she would carry part of that manure now into it become decomposed mm. and take it to her domas, yeah. sugar cane, banana, you know? So yeah. people were accustomed to this. When uh, the Europeans came as, uh, and colonized um, Kenya, mm. they took up the, a part of that and it was uh, recommended that uh, everybody, everybody should have a compost, you know? Mm. Everybody should uh, have a contour, contour tellers yeah. to the soil. Yeah. Uh, so when the recommendation was that uh, agriculture, I mean, uh, Kenya, uh, the natives should be taught agriculture, mm. they were concentrating on the composting and all those things. Yeah. I remember uh, some of them, you know, I went to school in 19. 56, mm. when I went to class one, mm. and in class uh, 58, 59, 60, I was in class the first time, I started the six. Yeah. We always were asked to bring um, uh, animal manure yes, yes, yeah. uh, to and uh, ash to make compost in school. Mm, yes. It was one of the subjects mm. we had to do. Yeah, you know, I remember. I remember to do yeah. the same thing. We had to do uh, uh, composting. So when now uh, Kenya government became independent, mm. the first thing they they did was to remove everything that was uh, had been introduced by the whites. Mm. Oh, okay, including scrubbing agriculture. Okay, mm. so that is where the problem started. Mm. So now, when we now come back and now we are te 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 teaching the people how to make compost mm. and how to use uh, organic matter, mm. they clearly saw we were taking them back. Them back where they were. You understand? Yes. They clearly saw we were taking them back. Yes. And uh, that is why in some of the districts, mm. they were saying, no, we don't want this type of education. Yeah. If you want to tell us, tell us which fertilizer to use, yes. which is the best <laughs> chemical now available in the field, yeah. so that we can be able to get more, more produce. Yes. You, you know, that is yeah. how, 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 how it came about. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those districts which um, refused our training, they came later, much later, mm -hmm. and said, no, we want you to come. Come and she said, you know, we have been left behind by the others. Yes. Come and uh, 
teach us how to make this compost. Yeah. Uh, so we actually well, go we have back to go back and, uh, and go back and show them how it, they can do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah, because it's um it's one of those arguments you always have with, with people. Mm. Um, before before people started using uh, chemical fertilizers mm -hmm. and the herbicides, what were they doing? Yeah. Um, the argument has always been it's um, they've been doing organic farming. So yeah. it's it's um, it's 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 interesting you've put it in the perspective that they were doing it traditional farming. Yeah. So um, from the argument you can say there's a, a slight difference between traditional farming and organic agriculture. Yes, there is. Uh, first, because um, there are many many aspects of uh, uh, that tradition mm. that has been uh, improved, mm. and also why you do it has been understood. Yeah. Uh, for instance, they didn't know that they were doing this to improve the health of the environment mm. or the health of the food people took. So they were just saying, because uh, this is the material you have, to do, this is what you are going to use. Yeah. You see, so to the, to the farmers being told to use animal manure or anything, they, they so assume it's because they don't have the money or mm. because they don't have uh, the opportunity to get my fertilizer. Yeah. That is the reason for so being, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, now those who are adopting organic farming, mm. or the main reason why organic farming is important, mm. it's because it brings health. Yeah. It is healthier. The chemicals you use have uh, repercussions. You know, they yeah. have. Uh, uh, negative effects mm. on the environment and on the consumer yeah. and on many other things. Yes. Uh, so in that case, uh, you would say it is not exactly uh, the tradition. There is, is a, there is a better understanding. There is a difference. Yes. Yeah. There's so a, in organic the farming, there is a better understanding. A better one. understanding and also uh, a need to, to go organic. Yes. You know, yeah. on the other hand, you know, this, all these chemicals uh, were not there those many years ago. Mm. It, it was not there. Yeah. Or even the effect of uh, pollution yeah. through chemical pesticides and so mm. The diseases that have been brought up through chemicals, they are not there now. Mm. Uh, they were not there at that time. Yes. But now, now they are there. Can, you can, yeah, you they are see there. The now they are there. So that is a, it's a reason why now you should go organic. Mm. Because uh, uh, the inputs which are being, being used yes, in organic, yeah. agri in uh, commercial agriculture, mm. many of them are extremely dangerous, mm. extremely poisonous. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay. So therefore it is very important to yeah, but to consider yeah. going organic. Mm -hmm. Yes, now so you you you've gone uh, to England and then you're back in the country. Mm -hmm. You've set up your um, uh, training, you're going into churches actively teaching people how to do organic farming mm -hmm. and then now you encounter the government. The yeah. government is against, um, against what you're trying to do. Yeah. What happens there? So are you guys being arrested? Are you guys uh, being chased away, are you guys told you are taking uh, the farmers the wrong direction? What 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 is the scenario there? Can you paint us uh, what was happening at that particular time? When we were when we we got these two um, external people, mm. we, we, we were we were with for the first three years. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. We got quite a lot of people strange people coming to our office where we had an office in Dorka mm. asking us who are these people and uh, and, and so forth. Mm. And but because they they didn't you know you have to start someone on a somewhere where you are not where you feel somebody has made a mistake. Mm. You start there. Yes, yes. But because they are not found it to be doing any mistake anywhere, mm. it was difficult to approach them. Yeah. I remember one day when uh, one of the, uh, the Dutch men went back home. Mm. 
because of the cost of the flight, mm. he went by Aeroflot. Aeroflot was the Asia, the Russian yeah. airline. Okay. So uh, from Nairobi, he had to go uh, first to Moscow mm. and then take a connecting flight. Can you imagine? After he came back, mm. I think after three months, somebody came to inquire, what were you doing in Moscow? Huh? Because you faced it there. <laughs> hmm? Okay, yeah. What were you doing in Moscow? Yeah. And they took him in, he had to write a statement. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, they said, I was on that. On a, you know, on a, a flight, yeah. And I was just there on transit. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get out of the of the uh, airport. The airport, yeah. So, uh, you know, then they, they just told me go back. Ah, uh, you know. Yeah. So that meant mm -hmm. they were ready. And you know, at that time, uh. those years, if you. Um, you say you are going to run an organization mm. or a non-profit making organization. Yes. You had to supply all the, the list of all the people who are funding you. Mm. You see? Yes. And the people who are in in charge of that organization. Mm. And they would be checked. What do they do? Mm. What do they do for a living? And so forth. Mm. So uh, all the three trustees, they all had visitors from the the, you know, the government, the government yeah. and uh, before we could be allowed to be registered. Uh, yeah. I think even now that is still a requirement. If you enroll a, a non-government organization, yeah. they will yeah. still send uh, some uh, some people to uh, dig your background, mm. find out why. Oh, you, are, you want to set up a non-profit making company, mm. where are you getting the money from? Yeah. And, uh, you know, for how will you be living? And things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, so you, you, you've you come back, you set up that, you have those challenges, and then now you, you know, you've, you've um, been able to attract people to come and join in uh, what you're trying to do in terms of funders. Yes. And then the government again um, shows signs of, um, um, you know, taking uh, the, um, or rather the, the IMF effect also kicks in oh, yeah, yeah. in terms of funding. Yeah. So what do you do next? Are you forced to try and see other ways that you can generate income? Yeah, that is when we when, when we started the school. Mm. Yeah, so that's that, where now Kiev comes in. No, uh. that is when we did just start. Uh, uh, Lake Yura Training College now, mm. uh, starting off in uh, 1995 mm. with the um, students from the from okay. the, yes. the groups who have been served. Yes, and then continuing now, you know, of course, uh, we then you know took in anybody mm. who applied to yes. join. Yeah. So, uh, and when the people who have gone through here, they were fighting jobs, mm. then more people would want to come in. Yes. So, um, so that's how it started. And okay. then the diploma program was yeah. set in because Jomo Kenyatta, who had uh, work, worked with us, uh, so that we can open a diploma course uh, mm. supported by them. Mm. The PC was not able to do that so to, 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 uh, to, to get the, to the get the, the final go ahead from, mm. the, from the board there. Mm. Uh, so then we had, then we had uh, then we had to start it off ourselves. Okay. Yeah. So yes. Um, so having gone through, having seen through the the whole process on how organic has developed in Kenya. Mm. Um, so what is what is your um, where do you see it going? So through that development, when you when you look in the coming years, yeah, how, how do I you think see the it question going? you asked there, how mm -hmm. do you look at uh, organic agriculture in the next five years or ten years? Yes, um, I think there is um, very good prospects. Mm. First, because the the people 
are, are aware now mm. of the problems brought to you by, by chemicals. Yes. People are very aware. They are even getting prescriptions from uh, a doctor. Yeah. That please eat only organic food. Okay. We have two people here who come every month wow. to collect vegetables. Interesting, you know? <laughs> yes. And they so, said we have to come because we have our doctors in yes. the Wow. You know? Yes. So people are becoming more and more aware. Mm -hmm. Those who are not aware, but yes, yet they are aware that this this chemical is the one that is spreading. Mm -hmm. uh, they are looking for indigenous. Mm -hmm. You find a lot of people have become, uh, you know, customers of indigenous foods. Mm -hmm. In this indigenous uh, uh, vegetables and so forth. Yes. And I think that is why Managu, um, Sage, Terere, mm. you know, have gained a lot, a lot of attraction. A lot of attraction. Yes. It's because they know at least these indigenous people don't explain. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you know, a lot of yeah, domas they... also. Yeah. You know, and uh, even uh, uh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. These were foods which were not being eaten before, but now they are in the market. Yeah, they are, and they are attracting very a lot huge, of, uh, huge demand. Also, good demand. Yes. So that is one thing. This demand is going to rise. Yes. Number two, um, you know, when there is a demand, people organize how to get the material. Yes. We have the good, um, good uh, uh, structure of. Um, Gated communities now. Mm -hmm. and many of those community, gated communities are organizing how can we, uh, you know, get some of the access to this. To, yeah, to this coming to, to bring us this product mm -hmm. or the other. Yes. And many of them are organizing for vegetable supply mm -hmm. or things like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, and they are very keen to know where, yeah. where is that food coming from. Yes not just bringing it, but uh, where did it come from. Mm. So that awareness is, uh, is very, very likely. Because when we get uh, a demand, the, the farmers react yes. in a positive way. Mm. They react in a positive way to say, um, uh, you know, since this is the one which is uh, in demand, mm. yeah, let's grow it. Yeah, sure. Yeah? yeah. If you go to Embu or Kirinyaga or Muranga now, in, in, and even in Meru, mm. there are many farmers who are growing organic macadamia, organic avocado fruit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because there is a big demand for organic uh, uh, products. Uh, organic uh, avocado, for instance, mm. organic, uh, you know? Uh, and it has to be inspected that mm. it is really organic. So the farmers are, you know? Yeah, very strict on yes. that. And then people are coming to say, under these trees, mm. the vegetables you grow here bring them yeah. because you know they are organic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The macadamia, as you obey the macadamia rule of organic, mm. the vegetables you grow under bring them. Yes. They are also organic. Mm. So you find that that will that uh, awareness is rising, yeah. and uh, also a few supermarkets are coming up. Yeah. It's unfortunate that um, Nakumat has gone down, mm. but I remember at uh, Westgate, yeah, we were invited by the owner of uh, of, um, of Nakumat yes. to come and open. Uh, a section on organic products. Yes. Huh? Yeah. And actually, I was uh, the guest of honor. I remember. Mm -hmm. We opened and we had uh, uh, suppliers coming from all the way from uh, Naivasha, where we had trained a group. Yes. Uh, Kinago, Kangema. Yeah. Uh, you know, bringing all the time those, those products. Types, those products. Yes. To Nakuma, uh, West Indies. Mm. Unfortunately, the, 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 the method of uh, approaching that uh, of selling is not good mm. because uh, 
uh, at Nakuma to the Watu, this is the shelf. Yeah. You'll be put through your product here. Yeah. When you come with it, it will be received, but it will be in the market, it will be kept here. Yeah. So come checking whether it has gone. What is sold is what we shall do. If it is not sold, you come and put it back. Mm. So the cost was on you the see? farmer? Yeah, and they are, not, they are not the ones on the market selling. Yeah. You know, you, ca you take it from me, you put it in your shelf. Mm. I cannot go there and do the selling. You are the one selling. Yeah. And then what is not sold, I have to come back and pick it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then what is sold, on top of that, what is sold, mm -hmm. you give them 90 days to feed you. 90 days is raising another crop. Mm. So Without being paid loads. for the first, the first one. Yeah. So, was it was after a few months, mm. the, the farmers could not keep up with that. Mm. Yeah, just like oh, interesting. Mm. So, having said that, having the Cinder positive, I mean, the, the market is obviously demanding for it. Mm. And um, a lot of people want this kind of products. The good thing is, here at Kiof, you're offering this kind of programs where people can actually come and learn. Yes. Um, those kind of things. So can you sort of share to people um, the kind of programs that you're having at Kio mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know how people can come and uh, be part of the organic sector? Um, we have realized we are offering organic agriculture. Mm. And organic agriculture is uh, doing all crops and all animals without any pesticides. Uh, injections, mm. you know, antibiotic injections, yeah. uh, all uh, medicines from the, uh, uh, the synthetic industry. Yes, you have to do all of it naturally. Yeah. When you look at the uh, the chain, mm. all the way from large preparation, where people start with harvesting. Mm to the seeds and to the planting, to the, you know, to weeding, to pest control, to storage, yeah. all those. Yeah. It's a very long chain. chain yes. So what we do, we train these young men how to start from the ground, from the first thing. Yes. And we train them through how the, to through go the through the chain, uh -huh. you know, yes. uh, so that you end up with a product in the kitchen yeah. or on the plate which has never touched any chemical. Yeah. Neither its products, its mm. uh, in ingredients. Because you, when you have a food, mm. it's not only the doma, mm. it is a, 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 you know, food. a plate of uh, pilau, yeah. uh, rice, meat, vegetables, you know, yeah. uh, onions. You know, you have to add up with the composition of all, this all kind of these food. ingredients mm. must be individually grown organically. Yes. So that whole process we teach them how it is done and how it is needed to be done. Mm. You have a choice yeah. of concentration. You do like to concentrate on soil requirements for organic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or concentrate on pest yeah. management organically, yes. or on uh, uh, food processing, yeah. or on marketing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we give them that. We start with the same base, yeah. but then they we allow people to go to specialize. In two years' time, they specialize yeah. in into that. Yeah. We also give them, allow them to uh, do a three months uh, practical. Uh, attachment yes. on a farm yeah. that is also doing the same organic mm. uh, on a place that is uh, doing organic yeah. so that they learn practically in the ground. Mm. Uh, we also send them to Uganda mm. uh, to learn commercial mm. uh, exporting, packaging yeah. or, and uh, processing of organic products. Yes. 
like now this Uganda that you have seen here, mm. the same number of students are in Kampala. Okay. In a, in a, in a college called Rusit College in Mitiana, mm. where they, they are also learning about organic farming. Yeah. But uh, because they cannot, uh, uh, but because they are not they are learning packaging and, and uh, packaging and uh, processing, yeah. Like there they process sodas, organic sodas, organic wine, huh. uh, they package, they export, you know, okay. yeah. uh, uh, to Denmark. Uh, well, let's see here, we have not reached that stage of uh, processing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here now, in return, they come here to study uh, like something like biomedicine, mm. um, nutrition, uh, you know those things, uh, and also composting and marketing of compost. Yes, we have the land here which we don't have. Okay. So that exchange yes. uh, has now been going on for ten years. Wow! Uh, since two o eight, the first group went in uh, August two o eight, uh, and uh, up to date it is uh, it's still it's still going on. It is still going on. Wow. So that exchange program mm. has uh, helped. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, Obviously, in exposing them to yes. those kind of environments. Yeah. 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 Mm. Interesting. So, when is your um, uh, intake? Uh, intake is in. Uh, uh, we used to have it March, April, yeah. because of the KCSE uh, announcement. Exam, yes. Exam announcement. Mm. It was coming end of January. I think the latest came in the end of March. Mm -hmm. But now, because uh, Mitian, uh, Matiang has uh, brought it to December, yes, uh, we are even having a, a January meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As soon as we can uh, have the main uh, Yes. Yeah. And also, uh, formerly we were not taking any university. Uh, graduates for attachment, yeah. but now we are taking. Wow. Now we are taking. Okay. Ask can you come for attachment? Uh -huh. Yeah, come. We have just released uh, four from Karatina University mm. and also from uh, University of Leroy. We had uh, two people from there. Okay. And uh, two, two from Karatina. Yeah. Oh. We have just uh, released. Uh, <coughs> uh, but now we are expecting um, a team from Jane uh, Quad from the uh, University. Yes. Uh, from KU. Mm. Last year we had people from Karatina, from Embo, from uh, from Edgerton, yeah. from uh, uh, and from uh, Masi de Molino. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So now we are taking uh, university yes. students. Okay. If you come for two months, eight weeks, mm. you do the attachment and then they mm. go. Mm. Yeah, so um, your final words, you, um, any message that you would really want people to sort of adhere to? And uh, I would like first people to, and, and you know, understand organic agriculture. Mm. Mm. Think it in. Mm. Accept that it is uh, the next industry that is coming from. Yes. Because people are going to, 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 to realize more and more that we want something healthy. Yes. This word of eating something healthy is, is in it's now. In now, yes. Yes. And the only way you can say I want to eat healthy is going with honey. Yeah. The best way is for each person to learn how to do a cacao. Organic. Even when they don't have um, a garden, mm. they can use uh, this uh, container gardening mm. and the new one which they are calling uh, vertical gardening. Yeah. Do it organically. Yes. You know, and then go for organic. Uh, you know. Next, uh, secondly, I want to tell the school leavers yes. that there is their jobs yeah. in organic. One of the reasons why it was quite popular mm. is because our 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 students needed to go, all of them go for the job. Immediately, yeah, they do. 
they, they, they get attacked. Unless somebody says I don't want to work now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But for the last five years, yeah. every graduate who has come out of here, he yeah. who comes from here yeah. has got a job. Yeah. And some are changing from this company to that company. You know? Yeah. They are employed by uh, some of these uh, you know, farmers mm -hmm. coming from the diaspora. They come with you, they want to go back home and they want to start a organic mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. So they will come here, they ask, can I get a man mm -hmm. to manage the Do that kind of work. Yes. So then after some time, that person will now move to another job or something yeah. like that. Yes. Uh, we get from these companies which are, well, which are exporting. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, from uh, organizations like uh, the ones I told you, Foster Parents, Family yeah. Financial, yes. many NGOs, NGOs yeah. are, uh, are uh, teaching people on food security, mm -hmm. and becoming uh, food secure, yeah. including the churches. Yeah. Like the African church has a very uh, big project Mm. which they call Christian Community Services. And they concentrate on health and yeah. agriculture. Yeah. And agriculture, they teach organic farms. Wow. You see? So yes. they come here and say, we want people. Um, so then, they are, then, uh, then the, industry, the marketing and industry has not started. Mm. Not yet. Not yet. Leave away this whole chain of uh, inspecting and con uh, and, and uh, 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 certification. Yeah. You know, you must be inspected and certified yes. that you are running. Yeah. And right now we have very few, very few uh, Kenyan, I mean, uh, key of trade mm. uh, inspectors. We don't have a certified. Okay. That's a whole line which is coming. And people yeah. have been asking, like, now I want to go organic. Who will come and certify me? Mm. You know? Who yeah. will come and inspect my farm? Mm. You know? That, that, that right has not started. But it is going to be the way. So I would like to say in five years' time, yeah. uh, the job market will continue for organic uh, people. Yes. Uh, more awareness will come. Will in the yeah. uh, processing, you know, has not started. Yeah. The other, I have even two letters here in my, my office say, mm. saying, I have been asked to, to take uh, organic milk. Since you have been teaching the people, the little command is processing <laughs> organic well, milk. Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. We haven't got such a person yet. Yeah. Hmm? So there's um there's a huge, yeah. huge um, when you go into organic milk, organic butter and uh, ghee and cheese, mm. uh, organic bread, organic all these cakes have to be organic. Yes. You know? All the basics. Organic sodas. Although in Uganda they are making organic sodas. Yeah. Nobody yes. has started the organic sodas. Mm. Uh, organic dried products, this uh, this bread product, this um, like crisps. Mm. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. We should be able to be making organic crisps. True, true. Mm. Yeah. So that uh, you have organic, uh, I mean, organic potatoes. Then you make crisps with them, mm. you roast them mm. using uh, a natural oil, like uh, sunflower oil mm. or uh, some of these. Uh, you know, which, which are not processed. Yeah. Well, okay. You know, then you, and the whole meat industry, you know, <laughs> has not yeah, been started. Yes. Yeah. So, so there is a lot of, you know, I can imagine, I can see the next 10 years, there will be a lot of um, conversion. Yeah. Converting to, to organic. Yes. A lot. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Santi Sana. And we appreciate for your time and um, being uh, open to share your um, experiences yeah. um, throughout the journey. Okay. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Very good. Thank you.
I did promise you that this conversation was going to be epic and I hope epic it was all right so hope this conversation gave you a better perspective of where the organic movement has come from especially uh, in Kenya and some of the struggles that people have gone through for us to be where we are today so um, really knowing the history of how things became to be today gives you a better perspective of what has been sacrificed and what has people gone through to have what you have and really that is that is one of the emotion and the conversation that i got from this conversation that there are people who have given up a lot for us to be where we are today and i hope it really did give you that perspective too and give you hope of the future of what really we can be able to accomplish moving forward so of course if this conversation was of great help for you be sure to share to share it on uh, your social media and share it with uh, your loved one and with your friends so that we can be able to move the needle in the organic movement and move it forward to where it's supposed to be so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning in till the next episode remember to be organic Cheers. Yes.